All right, good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. As I am indoors this evening, because uh, it's, it's drizzling a bit outside. Um, it's not raining heavy, but it's not good for books. I mean, I could be out there without the books, but the books will get wet in half an hour of being outside. So I'm indoors this evening. And so do also pray for our young people this evening. Um, this evening we have uh, the Young People's Fellowship and, and worship. And so do pray for them as we gather to worship and fellowship together. Let's pray. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Canticle from Romans chapter 4. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain. <clears throat> because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore, we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Amen. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. <clears throat> and our collect for this evening. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death and lead us to fullness of life 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As I said this morning, this evening we are, today, we are remembering the martyrs of Papua New Guinea, who died, the Christians who gave their life for, the, for Christ in 1901 and 1942. And so let's pray. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyrs triumphed over suffering and was faithful unto death, strengthen us with your grace that we may endure reproach and persecution and faithfully bear witness to the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Right, our psalm this evening is Psalm 102. Psalm 102. So we hear, we say the refrain first. My help comes from the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my crying come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days are consumed in smoke, and my bones turn away as in a furnace, burn away as in a furnace. My heart is smitten down and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. From the sound of my groaning, my bones cleave fast to my skin. I am become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl that haunts the ruins. I keep watch and I'm become like a sparrow, solitary upon the housetop. My enemies revile me all the day long, and those who rage at, the, at me have sworn together against me. I have eaten ashes for bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, for you have taken me up and cast me down. My days fade away like a shadow and I am withered like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever, and your name through all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to have mercy upon her. Surely the time has come. For your servants love her very stones and feel compassion for her dust. Then shall the nations Fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has built up Zion and shown himself in glory, when he has turned to the prayer of the destitute and has not despised their plea, this shall be written for those that come after, and a people yet unborn shall praise the Lord for he has looked down from his holy height from the heavens he beheld the earth that he might hear the signs of the prisoner and set free those condemned to die that the name of the Lord may be proclaimed in Zion in his praises in Jerusalem when peoples are gathered together and kingdoms also serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength in my journey and has shortened my days. I pray, O oh my God, do not take me in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. 
they shall wear out like a garment. You change them like clothing, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. The children of your servants shall continue, and their descendants shall be established in your sight. My help comes from the Lord and our prayer. Have pity on our frailty, O God, and in the hour of our death, cast us not away as clothing that is worn, for you are our eternal refuge. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I did a funeral today, so that, that psalm reminds me of that. Um, have pity on us in our frailty, and in the hour of death, do not cast us away. Amen. Um, meditation. <clears throat> This psalm, as the title says, is a prayer of one afflicted when he's faint and pours out his complaint before the Lord. Is this your present situation? Perhaps we could even put it this way. Is this ever not your condition? Certainly times of heightening, of heightened adversity come. In this psalm, some tragedy has befallen the psalmist in the prime of his life, verses 23 and 24. Yet pain is not something we experience some of the time. Pain is something we experience in some part of life all of the time. The consolation toward which this psalm beckons us is the permanence and stability of God himself. Throughout the psalm, we read the transience of humanity over against the established and enduring reality of God. They will perish, but you will remain, verse 26. Yet it is not the bare permanence of God that is the comfort of this psalm. It is the permanence of God as funneled into the future of his people, a future that cannot be threatened by our morality or hindered by what may befall us. And so as the psalm says, the children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. Verse 28. The grace of God grants a significance that transcends our brief little lives. For we have been united to Christ, his future now determines our future. Amen. All right, next we go to our reading, our New Testament reading, which is Mark chapter 6. <coughs> so it's Mark Mark chapter 6 from verse 14 to 29 <clears throat> Mark 6 verse 14 King Herod heard about this for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. And that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah. And still others claim, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John 
and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his, for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of, of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a dish. The king was greatly distressed because, because of his, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison and brought back his head on a dish. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Ah, sisters and brothers, there, there's, you know, that, that's such an evil thing, isn't it? I mean, what, how, how, what kind of heart would require someone, you know, I, I, she feared John so much that she could not bear him alive. So she plotted to kill John. She knew that Herod respected John. Herod even feared John because Herod, being Jewish, um, know what it is to do, to, you know, to speak against or to to do something against a prophet of God, and he. He, he believed that John was a prophet of God. But in his drunken stupor, you could say, and as it says, to please his dinner guests, he, he promised this little girl, this young girl, probably not more than about 12 or 13, um, whatever you want, I'll give it to you because you please my guests by dancing in some sort of erotic dance this girl did for these horrible men. This is, this is an exploitation of a little girl. You know, uh, you, you know these things are not new, sisters. They've been going on for, for centuries, haven't they? Exploiting this little girl. And this mother is even worse, isn't she? I mean, instead of actually doing something that would benefit this child she only cared about her own selfish self, self selfish wishes selfish desire the head of john the baptist is not going to satisfy this girl she has not she has not gotten any reward for this except to please her mother but the evil heart of herodias um, cause the death of John the Baptist. And sisters and brothers, I, 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 the, the point I'm making is that this is not, A, this is not something that just happened there. This, ha this happens throughout history. It happens now. It's, it's an unjust death, isn't it? An evil death. And sometimes you say, here is God's prophet. Why didn't God stop this but well, we don't know the answer to that and we can ask that question myriad of times throughout history we don't know the answers to those questions 
We just know that God in his providence, God in his, in his eternal will and decree, have certain things happen to fulfill his will and his desire. And um, these things happen partly because of the evil of human hearts. You see, and, 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 and so the Herodias, it's, it's the evil in her heart that causes the death of John. Um, it wasn't God who did that. It was Herodias in her evil, with her evil intentions. And as I said, that evil is still festering in people's hearts today where they have no problem killing a good person, a righteous person. Not someone who has done them anything wrong. All John did was, was spoke the word of God to Herodias, but she did not like to hear God's word because her guilty conscience would always, uh, whenever she sees John, her guilty conscience would always prick her, would always bother her. And in order to get rid of that guilty conscience, she needed to get rid of John. And, and herein lies the story of humanity, where you have wicked people who plot and kill innocent people because, because of their own guilt, because of their own sin, because of their own evil. And so sisters and brothers, when we see many of these things happening in our world, let us not be dismayed because it happens here. It happened to the great and final prophet of the Old Testament, John. Uh, John did not, you know, he did not deserve this kind of a death, frankly. He was a great prophet, and yet he died as a result of Herod's drunkenness, stupid promise, being enticed by a little, a little girl, and a mother's vindictiveness and hate. All of these things as cocktails put together that killed John. And that good men and women, righteous men and women, are being killed every day throughout the centuries just like this, with cocktail of evil, uh, just like John. John wasn't the first, and he certainly wasn't the last. All right, let's leave that there. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for your mercy and grace in bringing us to the end of another day. We thank you, Lord, for, for sustaining us for watching over us, for directing our steps today. So Lord, as we come to the end of this day, we pray that you'll give us a peaceful night, a quiet rest, comfort, so that we will find rest. We will find rest, not only in our bodies, but in our mind, in our soul, in our hearts. May we find rest. Rest from the not just physical labor, but rest from the, 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 the concerns and anxieties and cares of this world. Lord, we all have a burden that we care. We carry all, all of us have various kinds of cares, anxieties, and burdens that we carry every day. May we lay down our, our burden at your feet tonight. And may we find rest. Lord Jesus, you said we are to come to you. And we will find rest for our souls. So Lord, may we find that rest tonight in our sleep, in our rest, in our prayers, in our, in our reflection tonight. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are in pain. And because of their sickness, because of their pain, they can find no rest. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, 
give healing tonight we pray to those who are suffering who lack peace in their souls who lack rest in their minds and bodies who are tormented as it were because of illness or pain oh god in the name of jesus our great physician heal we pray those who are suffering tonight we pray we pray for those who are mourning the passing of loved ones we pray for veronica and family as she mourns the passing of her brother arthur we pray for that family that you will give them comfort and strength as they mourn we pray for dolly and her family as they mourn the passing of her sister and so lord we pray for those who are mourning. pray for the family of the funeral i did today that family as they mourn the passing of their loved one young young woman who tragically passed away so suddenly and so lord we pray for that family as they mourn the passing and so lord we ask for your grace in the in our time of weakness we promise that when we are weak in ourselves we in your grace by your grace we are strong and so help us lord to stand firm in your might in your strength it's not by our might it's not by our strength but it's by your spirit oh god may we stand firm in your spirit by your spirit in your strength as we face the challenges of each day the concerns of the day the, the journey ahead as we carry on we continue our journey in the wilderness of this world lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our world we pray lord for peace in our world we pray for the people of Ukraine and other parts of the world where there is where there is conflict, where there is war. Hear us, Lord, for peace in our world. We pray for people of Pakistan as they combat the, this terrible uh, flood that's engulfed their land, killing so many people. We pray for them. Have mercy, O oh God, have mercy. We pray for places where there are drought, uh, there, where there is drought and there, there, is, there is no water and people are dying as a result of lack of water. Various parts of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain or who are bereaved knowing that whenever danger threatens your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe comfort and heal them we pray restore them to health and strength through jesus christ our lord amen guide us waking o lord and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with christ and asleep we may rest in peace our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen.
bless you and keep you may the Lord watch over you and give you his peace and rest tonight sisters and brothers as you sleep in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen good night sisters and brothers